Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is George. Today we're gonna to review basic wiring techniques for your layout. We're gonna be discussing block wiring for multiple loops that are connected by track. This is a follow-up video to the previous one where we discussed bus wiring individual loops, a single loop or multiple single loops on your layout. I've prepared a sample here of block wiring. We have two loops shown here, loop number one track connected to loop number two train track. They're both powered by the Lionel ZW transformer. In this case, we have throttle number one and throttle number two. Throttle number one is powering loop number one, throttle number two is powering loop number two. You can go up to four loops here with the same method, but right now we have two shown. So throttle number one, AC ground is this black wire, AC hot is the red wire. The ground is connected to the common terminals up on the top. The hot is connected to the terminals on the bottom marked A, B, C, and D. The ground wire comes here to the terminal block and is connected. The terminal block contains a terminal strip that connects all the posts together. This way, this one wire powers the entire terminal block. This block is the AC ground. We have another wire coming out of there for our bus wire to loop number one. That's the ground wire to loop number one. We have the AC hot wire now coming to another terminal block. This is the AC hot terminal block. Again, it contains a terminal strip that powers all of the posts. So we can run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires powering either accessories or switches or other items or track on the layout. In this case though, we have the one wire coming out this is the AC hot for our bus wire to loop number one. So these both, both of these wires, the AC ground and the AC hot, is our bus wire to loop number one. Loop number one has power now, AC ground on the outside rails, AC hot on the center rail. But the center rail has an insulated rail joiner right here, which separates the center rail from loop one to loop number two. They're not touching, they're electrically isolated. They are separated by the insulated rail joiner. Here I've shown Atlas O-Scale three rail track. Atlas sells insulated rail joiners. They come in a little pack. So once connected, they don't allow the flow of electricity between the center rail. So loop number one is electrically isolated from loop number two. This allows us to run a separate train on loop number one and a separate train on loop number two. Two individual trains running on two individual loops on your layout. Loop number one is powered by throttle number one. Loop number two is powered by throttle number two. The ground is shared between your entire layout through multiple loops. The power, the hot is not shared. It stops right here. So in this, in this case, this switch on loop number two comes right here and stops, does not meet or carry through the center rail on loop number one. This is powered by throttle number one, this center rail, up to this point. And from here, it's powered by throttle number two on the center rail for loop number two, allowing you to run individual trains on each loop. You can use an entire terminal block to separate AC ground from AC hot, or you can share a terminal block. And all you have to do is cut the terminal strip. Here I've cut two pieces off and I've placed them here. And then I've cut two pieces of the AC hot terminal strip and I've placed them here. Now only these four posts are AC hot and only these four posts are AC ground. The posts in the center are not connected to the transformer and they're not connected to each other because we've not connected the terminal strip across as we have in this case. The terminal strip goes across here, powering the entire block for AC hot, and powering the terminal strip here, powers everything connected to AC ground. So the whole thing is wired for ground, and this whole thing is wired for AC hot. Here we've separated them because we've cut the terminal strip and only power certain posts. So we can share a terminal block. So bus wire number one, from throttle number one powers loop number one, bus wire number two, from throttle number two powers loop number two. And all this wiring is underneath your layout. Should be a hole here. You're gonna drop your wires through. These are your feeder wires connected to your bus wire. 
Leave a little slack in your feeder wires. If you ever have damaged track or a damaged section that needs replacement, you can easily lift it up because you should have six to nine inches of slack of your feeder wire where it connects to your bus wire. So you can just, do, just undo your feeder wire here, replace your track section, and reconnect to your bus wire. So bus wire number one connects loop number one to throttle number one, and bus wire number two connects throttle number two to loop number two. And we've electrically isolated the central, center rail on our layout. Therefore, each loop is connected to a different throttle, allowing you to run separate trains on separate loops. You can see here on my layout, at this particular turnout switch, I have an insulated rail joiner. Separating the power from this rail does not continue past this point. There is a separate control powering this center rail, which is a siding on my layout. So when I throttle up the main line, that power does not go down to the siding. It only stays on the main line. Okay, so to recap, here's your layout with multiple loops. Here's loop number one track. Here's loop number two track. They're connected by these turnouts right here. The only separation is the center rail where loop number one track meets loop number two track. All they have to separate is the center rail right there. You can either cut it with a tool, such as a Dremel tool, so that the center rail is not touching from loop number one to loop number two. The outside rails are all touching. They're sharing a common ground for your entire layout. This is block now one, this is block two. You can run separate engines, one engine on loop number one, another engine on loop number two. So two separate trains are running now on your layout. If you have multiple loops, you can run up to four per transformer, one for each throttle. You can run up to four loops using block wiring. Just keep them separated at the turnouts. Here's your transformer. Your first set of bus wires comes out to loop number one. Here's your AC hot to the center rail, the AC ground to the outside rail. Either outside rail, it doesn't matter. Bus wires for loop number two, the AC ground comes to the outside rail, either outside rail, again, it doesn't matter. Your AC hot goes to the center rail. So the center rail power is traveling through all of loop number two, use throttle number two, and stops right here. It doesn't go through because the rails are separated because you've cut them. They don't provide power to loop number one. So it's that separation that causes individual blocks on your layout, allowing you to run separate trains for each loop. The outside rails are all touching and share a common ground. The second type of block wiring is to operate accessories. I built another sample right here. So in this case, we're separating the outside rail, the ground rail, separated right here. If you don't have these insulated rail joiners, you can just cut the track. You can see here, this track has been cut. These two rails, these two outside rails are not touching. Therefore, there's no ground flow from here to here and from here to here, because over here we have the insulated rail joiner. So this section of outside rail does not have power. Your accessory can be connected to this outside rail with one wire, the ground wire. The AC hot can come back to the transformer from the accessory. So when the wheels of the train come through and make contact, when they pass that and they make contact, they carry the ground through the wheels, through the axle down the other wheel, completing the circuit to your accessory such as a crossing gate. And that would power the crossing gate as the train comes through. And when the train exits, it will power off because it will break the circuit to your accessory. And that's the second type of block wiring. So the first type is center rail to center rail. And the second type is outside rail to outside rail. The accessory operating block wiring should look like this. Here's your track, your three rail track. Here's your wire. Your AC hot is connected to the center rail and the AC ground is connected to the outside rail. The other end of the outside rail here is separated, it's cut. It's cut here and it's cut here. Your accessory 
wire is connected to this insulated, the, or the electrically isolated outside rail that is separated on both ends, right here to the accessory. That's the AC ground. AC hot, the other end, is connected to the power, the AC hot of the transformer, or to the center rail. So when the train comes through and picks up the ground from the outside wheel through the axle to the other wheel and it makes connection on the outside rail, it completes the circuit to the accessory. Now let's say that's a crossing gate, it'll operate that crossing gate as long as the wheels of the train are making connection here. When the train passes through, the circuit is open again, shutting off the accessory and crossing gate will open. This is block wiring for accessory operation. Thank you everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Basic wiring techniques for block wiring. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now.